Welcome to Morpheus Chair, the program where you learn to build robots from your comfy chairs. Thanks a lot for the support and in this video what we're going to do is something really important which is we are going to use the URDFs that you generated in previous videos for the Move It package and so on to create a gazebo simulation so that you can test anything without damaging the robot or maybe you're in the go and you can't have access to the robot and you want to develop things so simulations are a vital part in robot software development so uh, i think this is really important if you have any doubts on how we are doing things and stuff i highly recommend you that you have a look at robot ignite academy because there's a course on urdf's generation which will give you all the tools that you need to do this perfectly. I'm not going to go into details because there it's much more explained there with much more details and examples. But here you're going to see the vital things that you have to have into consideration so that it works. Yeah? So without further ado, to the workbench. So let's start with the episode four on how to create your own gazebo simulation for a robot arm. So why do we need this? We need this basically for many reasons, but I've stated the most important or the most common ones here. Essentially, when you're working with robots, normally they are expensive or at least they are not very cheap. That's one. So normally you only have one robot in, in an office that you might be like 5, 10, 20 people using maybe two or three robots. So not everyone can have a robot to do tests all the time. So doing a simulation, it's vital to improve your speed in uh, software development for the robot. That's one. Second, maybe you, are, you don't have access to the robot. Maybe you don't have money to buy a robot or maybe it doesn't, hasn't arrived yet. Or maybe you want to develop a software for a robot that you don't need to have or just you're developing for many robots so you can't have all the robots in the spectrum. So for these reasons and many, many more, simulations are vital. Also, one very important is maybe you want to try something risky so it's not a very good idea to try things that might not work in the real robot so you try it with a simulation the thing is that with simulations you have to try to make them as transparent as possible by transparent i mean that they have to be exactly the same as the real robot or at least their interface that way all the mm, all the programs that you generate for the simulation they will work exactly the same way in the real robot and that's what we are going to do now so the first thing is to make a simulation you need three things a world spawn your urdf that we already you you did it for the move it package if not, please have a look at the, the Move It package video and also a control system. So uh, as in the real robot, there's a control system that in the real robot you have to communicate through USB with the servers and so on. In the simulation, there is one also, just that it's using the simulation API. So we have to develop all those three things yeah so let's have a look so I've created uh, the code as always this code will be in the ROS deck that I share uh, in the description below and also in the git so don't worry if you don't have the code you can download it and open this ROS deck uh, plug and play yeah so the first thing is let's have a look at the launch file so I've created the launch the folder here and we start the simulation here. 
in the package open a uh, open manipulator morpheus chair tutorials here essentially it's divided in three parts the first part is starting the the world the the gazebo world in this case this gazebo world is here this gazebo world uh, what it does is set up the physics I won't go into details on how to do it if you need any explanation please uh, ask it in the, the comments leave it in the comments below and I'll try to answer it as soon as possible or have a look at loads of videos that we talk more in depth in details on how to create worlds uh, so essentially it's that then the ambient light the camera starting point and then we add a Kinect a camera that we will use in the next video to add it to the move it so that move it has perception with um, a point cloud camera in this case uh, with its plugin and and that's quite it so it's a very simple world we have also the Sun and the ground plane that's it yeah then the next part is spawning so we have these uh, these parts with, which essentially are this is loading the URDF that we were using in the move it if you remember so this is one and this is the URDF that we were using yeah I won't go into details but essentially we are loading that into this parameter and this parameter is the one that it's used to spawn this robot in gazebo you see gazebo ROS is the package that makes the connection between ROS and gazebo simulator yeah and we spawn it as a uh, at a certain uh, position and so on with a certain name that it doesn't matter really you can change the name if you want and then we do some TF publishing which uh, it's for the camera and to fix the base link to a base footprint that we will use for other stuff yeah so essentially it's just to to publish some tfs and the same here with the the kinect the the point cloud sensor we do this the exact same thing just to have it published okay great this is for the part of spawning and so on and then we need the control and this is the most vital part and the thing that I'll explain more in detail just because it's the one that gives more problems and the one that it's vital that you do correctly so that you, all the things that you develop for the real robot are useful in the simulation and the other way around because at the end we're going to use the move it package this one that we did in the episode in, in the episode of move it package for the real robot we didn't use it in the simulation but you're going to see that it works exactly the same we didn't change anything and that's because of this mainly because of this yeah so let's have a look so here we are doing three things we are starting we are loading this parameters trajectory controllers we are spawning the controllers which are joint state and arm that we are going to see in a minute and then we are publishing the tfs based on the the state of the joints and so on so that we can see uh, the joints in our vis because this was published by the real robot also yeah but in this case we have to publish it in the simulation also so these controllers are specified in this trajectory controller that you place in this config file a uh, folder sorry and it's very simple we start two controllers the joint state controller and the arm the joint state controller what it does is read the joints of the robot and publish them and that is used by move it to know where exactly the robot is and if it's reaching the destination and so on 
and then the controller arm. And this one, we are defining position controllers and these joints and these constraints with some parameters that we won't talk, but these are the most important parts, which is what's this and what's this. So to, to have a look at this and know what we should put here, we go to the URDF that we have here. There we go. And the first thing is to make everything work, you have to have this ROS control plugin here, which is Gazebo ROS control and no namespace in this case. Otherwise, we would have to put here namespace and then everything inside it. Uh, and that's quite it, basically. If you leave it like that, it's more than enough. Yeah. What is important here is the URDFs. We have to define these transmissions. So this is the URDF that we used in Move It, and it wasn't used there because this is only for simulation. You are defining these transmissions and the type of transmission, the hardware interface. So in the real robot, you have position encoders. Well, in simulation, it's exactly the same, just that we have to define it by software because it doesn't exist. So we do hardware interface and then position joint interface. If you have any problems when you launch it in your local computers, it's because you haven't installed all the ROS controllers. So install that. I'll leave in the description the, the command for, do that, for doing that if someone asks for it. But essentially, normally the problems come from there because not all the controllers are installed by default in ROS. In ROSDS, you won't have any problems because it's already installed. Okay, so you have to put a transmission for each of the joints. So we have ID 1 to 6. And these are the joints that we are specifying here. Yeah, and that's mainly it. So let's have a look how it works. So if you go, I've stated all the code here and some explanations. So we're going to launch the simulation. In your local computer, you would do it by commands. I'm going to launch it here just like that because it, I mean, it's much easier. And there you go. So we have our robot arm that you, you should recognize it because it's the one that we saw in the move it um, configuration wizard. And you can see that we have an, in this case is an, is a connect, but basically it's a point cloud sensor. It's a depth sensor. Yep. Yeah. And that's quite it. If for example, we have a look at this sensor here. Ross run RQT image. There you go. Um, you have to open the graphical tools to see it. So there we go. I'm going to select um, the RGB information. There you go. So as you can see in the simulation, there are some colors that are not rendered. It's not important because the important part is this, the, the sensory data, because this is the one that it will be used to recognize objects, to grasp them and so on. So very important there. So you can see there that we have it. Then, uh, yeah. So it's a depth sensor, so we should have some depth image here. There you go. I'm going to leave it uh, in the compressed, just like that. Okay, fantastic. So now I'm going to launch another web shell and I'm going to launch the, the move it that we developed in previous episodes. I haven't changed anything. And this is very important because 
This means that everything that I make and I modify for move it here, it will work in my real robot. And when we add perception, if we have the same sensor, it will work the same way. In theory, at least. So let's start, move it. Okay, when we have that message of um, ready to plan, then it's ready. There you go. Just click here if, if it's the center, the window. Okay, fantastic. So we have this here and we have the planning and we're going to put, for example, a home update. There you go. Let me put it like that. This way we can see the simulation and the RVs working at the same time. There we go. So whoop, here, plan, plan and execute, and there it goes. This is what the camera is seeing. Fantastic. So we have the simulation there working, and it moved with the same package for move it. So the advantages of this, basically we can do whatever we want and we don't have to care if there's any problems. For example, I'm going to put random, I'm going to update. For example, that position wouldn't be safe. Let's put it a bit bigger. That position is not safe in the real robot. So, if I'm going to execute it, what happens? Let's, let's have a look. There we go. There we go. So that, in, for example, in my workspace, I'm not able to do this movement just because I don't have enough space. So this is a way that I can test that this works, that it's safe. So at least it didn't hit on the floor or something like that. So I know that this position, it's, it's okay. Yeah. And that's quite it. And that's all for today. I hope you liked the video. So hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't yet. We publish videos about Rust and robotics topics. In the next video, what we're going to do is add perception to move it so that we can sense that there's a table and that's the first step to do grasping in a way that the robot doesn't just crash into the table, yeah? And we are going to use the simulation that we just did to test everything, to set up everything and once we have it, then we will connect a depth sensor to the real robot and we will try to do the same thing. So, until then, keep going.